Hello and welcome back. It's puzzle time with Sudoku Sleuth, and we have a phenomenal puzzle for you today. Now, we're continuing with the series of the top 20 rated puzzles on Logic Masters Germany. Now, just bear in mind that when I started the series, I took a snapshot of what the top 20 are. Clearly, because it's a live site, people are voting all the time, what is the top 20 on a given day is going to vary. But I think, regardless, it's going to continue to show us some of the best-rated puzzles of all time that are within, essentially, the difficulty rating of this particular channel. Now, the other reason why I am particularly excited about this today is it is an XV puzzle, something that I feel we're now well-practiced in, but also based on some of the comments that everybody leaves, is some of the puzzles that people enjoy the most. So, with that, with that enough of an introduction, Let's take a look at what Stitch Rainbows has in hold for us. So, Stitch Rainbows, Stitch Rainbow, one rainbow by Thoughtbite. And we have the following rule sets. Um, XV cells are separated by an X sum to 10. So we've got many of these around the puzzle you can see. Cells separated by a V must sum to 5. And we have not many of these actually now all v's are given not all x's are given so something to be sort of careful about here is that the negative constraint applies but only for v's we also have crop keepers cells separated by a white dot of which there is only one here in box two are consecutive and cells separated by a black dot and again there's only one domino here in box two have a one to two ratio lastly we have numbers cannot repeat in cages so we have these cages which looking at them i don't think we actually need totals because they are nine cell cages so we actually know their total and therefore they must contain all the digits one through to nine now it doesn't have it in the rule set of this puzzle but i'm absolutely assuming that normal sudoku rules apply and therefore, the digits 1 to 9 have to go down in every row, every column, and every 3x3 three three box. And that's how I will be playing it. So, looking forward to it, you may have seen from the screenshot that this is rated top 17. Um, you probably also may recall, if you've seen some of the previous videos in this series, that I've accidentally labeled number 18 as top 17 uh, this is the genuine top 17. The previous one was number 18. Uh, if you want to play along, link will be in the description down below as usual. And with that said, let's restart the clock and see how we get on. So we've done together many XV puzzles. So this is not going to come as a surprise. If you haven't actually played other XV puzzles on the channel, I'll make sure to link to some of the Colorado series here with a card. Definitely check them out. They are phenomenal puzzles as well. But essentially what I'm doing is, if you think about fives, they can be one, four, or two, three. But the idea is they are different colors, whatever they may be. This could be the two, three, this could be the one, four. I will remove the digits now. Um, but the interesting part is they have to be different. Now, because we have two blues already in row one, this has to be green. Two green in column nine, this has to be blue, and so on and so forth around the puzzle. Yep. Now, here I know this has to be a blue-red pair. I've already got two greens in the column. This is a blue-red pair. This can't be the blue because we've already placed two in box one. So that's blue. That's red, red being high. And you can see the, the puzzle is very symmetrical. The only thing that really will help us actually disambiguate anything is these crop kidos. Everything else is exactly the same, which you know immediately tempts me to put a 5 in here, but let's prove that there is a 5, not just that the symmetry is actually placing a 5. Uh, so we need green on here. Green would be there. This is red. We need blue on here. Blue would be there. Reds would be red, and I'm guessing green in here. Yeah, green and red. What else do we know? Here is a bit of logic. 
So take a look at this cage, this very deliberate cage. And we said that because it's a nine cell, yeah, it's a nine cell cage, it has to contain all the digits. Now, where does this digit go? It's not going in the same column in here. It's got to be there. And I'm going to, yeah, that's got to be here. And let me guess. Yep, that's got to be there. And in a moment, I'm probably going to start using letters, given how this is sort of playing out. Yep, letter as it is. Right, let's get the letter tool out. Um, you can enable it here from the pen letter tool. Um, and let's place in some letters. Now, I say this every time I do this, but it almost doesn't matter what the letters are as long as you're consistent. So as long as B always goes with the same letter, in my case, I use H. It just happens to be, essentially, I'm rotating around the E. And as long as you're consistent, that's all that matters. Remember, these two are the same. This is a D and an F. This is an I. I don't know what these are yet. Um, yeah, I will use this bit of logic here. So if you think about what this is saying, this is actually either blue or red. So let's just use some numbers here. So if you think about black crop key dots for a second, they're either one, two, three, four, six, or eight. So whichever cell this is, it's either joint with a red, as in this is three or four, joint with six, eight. Or this is a lower digit, you know, one, two, it could also be a four, four could be joined with a two. Now, whatever it is, because it's two to one ratio, it's not going to be C. But at the same time, my thinking is, is it's not blue, because we've got the negative constraints on, on blue. This would have to be a D with an A, and there's no V between them. So that's red. Sorry, please hold on a moment. Sorry about the interruption. Let's see if we can continue with our puzzle. So, yeah, I just could have confirmed that this is not D, not C, etc. This has to be red. Obviously, five can never be on a black crop key dot. We've kind of listed the digits here. Let's remove that. Um, yeah, we can do a bit of tidying up. This has to be D, F, what else do I know? Let's do a bit of Sudoku, that's a D here, there's an A, someone in here. Not very useful. See, everything about this puzzle tells me, oh yeah, kind of not paying att attention. Um, this C looks at there, that's a B, that's a B, that's a C, that's a C. C in my case goes with G, which we can pencil mark in here. Uh, this cell has to be the same as this one. That's a D, A, A, I. Well, at least everything we've colored so far is now penned in. We know what it is. So yeah, I, I want to do a little bit of Sudoku, actually. Here is... Let's take a look at column 5 and row 5, because it's under a huge amount of pressure. Where do the blue digits go? They're not in here. They're not there. You can see AD, AD, AD. These are the blue digits. Now, the other way around, we can do this again. Green is not here. Green is not there. Green is not here. Again, BC. Greens. And there you go. Five cannot be on an X 
Otherwise, you double the five. We've proven that this is the five, and we have our first digit. Is it really six minutes in? Goodness. Uh, let's see what else we can do uh, reasonably easily. These clearly now all have to be red. These are all high digits because we've already placed all the low digits in green and blue. We don't know what these are. We know it's an A or C. Am I going to pencil mark that? Yeah, why not? That's A, C. That's D or C. No, that's a D. Therefore, that's an F. This is B or D. It's not a D. So that's a B and an H. This is A or B. It's not B. That's an A, I. And therefore, this couldn't be an A. Otherwise, we'd be repeating the I in here. This is a G and a C. Let's see if we can finish where all of these go. Yeah, that's a D. Uh, so we've so D's in here somewhere. Negative constraint on the on the V's. That's the D. That's the last D. A's. Oops. A. Um. Yeah, negative constraint. I'm sort of just doing it almost like absent-mindedly, really. And that's the last A, I'm going to say. So that's two blues, two blues, two blues. Yeah, yeah. That's all the blues. Let's see if we can do the same with the greens. Where does B go? That's a B. B's done here. Are oh, therefore B, C. That's sort of obvious. Negative constraint can't be next to the C. B. Is that all the B's done? I think so. Yeah. C's. Got one in here. Again, negative constraint. That has to be the C. Just looking at these two, eliminating everything else in the box. That's the last C, I believe. That's two greens, two greens, two greens, two greens, two greens already, two greens. That's all the greens. I mean, that was the last blue. Okay. We need, let's do a little, we'll continue doing a little bit of lettering. So F and I, we need G and H. That's not an H, that's G, that's H. Um, let's continue. We know E is on here, joint with, so we need F, G, where is H? H is not here, not there. That's H, am I doing this right? Yeah, yeah, that looks correct. That's gotta be E. That's the remaining F, all good. We need I and F now, I will just, Pencil mark these. I and F, I said. Yep. We need G, E, G, and I. Can do both in here, really. There. Actually, G is restricted. Can't do it there. Can't do it there. G is absolutely in here. And then I said E and I, I believe. Are either of them restricted? Not really. So this is from E, F, and I. We've got F and I in the row. That has to be E, therefore. That's an I. That's an F. Hang on. It was an F all along. Surely that's the I. That's the F. E or I. Or H. Yeah. E, H, I. We need... G and E in here. Both seem available to me. We need an H. I'm just going to maybe a little bit of easier Sudoku for me as just doing a bit of that. Yeah, H. That's all the H is done, surely. There. 
Um, <coughs> yes, all of them. One, two, three, one, two, no, one more. One, two, three, that's all of them now. Um, I've done H's, I believe. Yeah, let's just color that. G's, color that. Can I do I's next? No, only two of them. F. No, sorry. F. That's a lot more. Yeah, that's good. This is therefore I, E. I need E, I, E, E, I, I. That's, yeah, that's all of them. And they're all fives, remember? They're the only ones where they are fixed. And the I is red. Got nine of them as well. Yeah, and the Fs. We've got nine of them. Yeah, as well. That's all of them. Okay. Here's a very obvious one. That's six. Therefore, that's four. Therefore, that's eight. That's two. That's three. That's seven. Um, C has to be a one because it's the counterpart of the other green. That's the last digit, nine. And that's the solution to today's puzzle. I mean, it's a it's a phenomenal puzzle for sure. I mean, I I think I love all XV puzzles pretty much, especially when you get out the coloring and just crack on with it. And I imagine that's sort of what the title is hinting at, you know, Stitch Rainbow, very much leading you towards coloring uh, the grid to basically see what else is going on. Um, and certainly deserving of its rating. I, I don't know if I prefer the Colorado series, probably because... If I played them, they're a bit more challenging. This feels a little bit easier now that you've done kind of harder puzzles, but immensely enjoyable puzzle. I hope you enjoyed it too. And uh, please let me know how you get on with it in the, in the comments. Bye for now.